Welcome. In this session, we'll learn how to do the analysis of a transfer function block in math in this semester. Let's start. First of all, what do we mean by transfer function? Now we know transfer function actually represents the system, and it is simply the representation system. Now to illustrate this point, let us take an example of an RC network. Let's suppose we have an RC network. So this is an RC network. And this is our input. And we want to take the output across this capacitor. So this is our R equal to one. This takes C equal to one for simplicity. So our aim is to obtain the transfer function of this network first. So to obtain the transfer function, we know we need to convert this to the S domain. So if we convert it to a frequency domain, you know the network look like this. We know the transfer function of capacitor is one by SC and we have taken C equal to one for simplicity, so it will be one. Here it is R simply, and R is equal to one here. And so this will be VIS, not VIC, but it will be of S now. And this will be simply V of S. So how do I obtain this output voltage? Output voltage you can write in terms of n well, this using the voltage division rule this will be one by s and input into I s divided by one by s in terms of this divided by the impedance of this using the voltage division rule if you remember it this will be so now output divided by input will be equal to one by s divided by if you simplify this, this will be simple. Yes, sorry, not as this will be one divided by s. You can check it. So the transfer function of this RC network is one by one plus s. So output by input is called the transfer function of the system. We denote it by h of s in control theory, if you remember. Right, so this is the transfer function of the network. So this network is described by, RC network is described by this transfer function, one by one plus S. And if I say, before I go switch to the MATLAB to obtain the solution of simile, let's suppose the input to this, uh, this system is, I, I apply a constant voltage and I turn that constant voltage on at equal to zero, what should happen? And so Five volts. So this is five volts. This is five volts. And this is the input to the system. Now, what will happen to the output? How will the output of this change? The output will simply, since this is a capacitor system and output is taken across this. Uh, see what will do? This try to do. This will try to start charging this capacitor towards this voltage, this constant voltage. It's equal to. Uh, equal to five volts here. Yeah. Now, how much time this will take, means how much time it will take to charge will be decided by this RC time constant. We know this from the network theory. We know this from the network theory. RC is one here. For simplicity, we have taken it equal to one. So if you remember the network theory, it will be approximately five time constants, means five tau. Tau is the time constant. It will be approximately five time constant, and it should be five. E R C is one, minus tau is one. So this is tau, tau is one. So this should be five seconds actually. So this should take five seconds to reach this final value. All right. So this is how the response of this R C network looks like. Now let's check the same response from the simulac now. Whether we get that first, what was we, what we'll do? We'll try to build this transfer function in this MATLAB, and let's see if the this response of this network is indeed looks like this. Minus will it charge to final value approximately in five time constants? All right. To show you this, let me switch to MATLAB. So this is MATLAB. Let's open Simulink. So this is Simulink. And when you open Simulink, this window appears here. You click on this. 
Seminic library browser. The window pops up that looks like this. And to obtain the transfer function, you can click on this continuous and there is this transfer function block. This is the transfer function. You can edit and when you add it, it looks like this. It's already equal to this. Now, if you double click this, how to set the transfer function values. Let me show you that, how to set the transfer function value. These are, this. so this is the numerator part. Numerator is one, denominator is one comma one, and that gives us this transfer function. That gives us this transfer function. So you can change the value of this R and C later on. So the value of the options will change. So this is a simple example. So this is a transfer function. So it's simple. And we learned that this is the transfer function of a RC network also when R and C are equal to one. All right, let us apply a constant voltage. Constant simply means a step here, when which turns on at T equal to zero. So let's apply a step voltage. To apply a step voltage, I have to get a step source from this, click on the sources and click on the step and add it to this. Now once I add it, this is the step. So I connect it, this is the step. And now I want to check the output also. So to check the output, I have to click on the library browser also and click on syncs. And so this is a time varying output edit. And you can check. We have added a scope block, and this is now we want to check the input as well as output simultaneously. Now, to do that, I need to have two inputs of the scope. So, to do this, double click on the scope block, or right click. You can do it by one click on this configuration button, change it to two. All right. And then go back to the model. So this is the output of this network. This is the input. And let's name the variable. So this is the input and this is the output. All right, let me run this. Okay, now, first of all, before I run this, remember this step originally, the step changes at t equal to one. So to set it at t equal to zero, double click on it. So this is what appears there. And the step time is set equal to one, set it to zero. And the step will start at t equal to one. So, so you can set it to zero. So now you can see, so this is the model and you can run it, run the model to see the result. Let me double click on the scope and this window appears. You can see approximately in five time constants, the response reaches to the final value. You can check it here. Have a look at this. Approximately in five time constants, the system response reaches to the final value. Now this is one example. This is, I have shown you how to, what is, what do we mean by transfer function? Transfer function actually describes the system. That's why we go for transfer function model of the system. And MATLAB has an inbuilt transfer function block. So you don't need to do it. If you know the transfer function of the system or any network, just write the coefficients. This will give you the transfer function. Now let me show you one more example here. But before I do that example, if I want to check the uh, this, uh, I want to check the impulse response of this network. What will happen if I apply an in impulse to this network? I mean, if I want to check the impulse response of this network, this is a step response, by the way, of this RC network. If this transfer function represents this uh, RC network, so this is the step response of this transfer this network. Now, what we'll do, we'll obtain the impulse response of the network. See, there is no there is a discrete impulse available in Simulink, but there is no continuous impulse available in this. But you can obtain an impulse from this. How? I've already told you that. By taking the step as input and passing it to a derivative block. If you differentiate this step, this will give you an impulse as output. And then you can apply that as input to this. So let me get a derivative block from this library and you can click on the continuous and there is this derivative block edit 
and switch back and this is the derivative block and connect it here so this is not the input now this is the input this is the input now if i run this you will see an interesting thing will happen you will see the output is almost zero why is this showing output is zero now let me illustrate that now first let us see the view let's change the view let's check the output on two different windows and so let's change the step time now this is the impulse response of this system this is the impulse response of the system so this is the input to the system i hope this qualifies as input this qualifies as an impulse because the amplitude of this impulse is 15 10 is power 30 so this is almost an impulse impulse means which has very large amplitude now if you apply this as input to an rc system what will do it will charge instantaneously and if it charge instantaneously then you know there is also r what will this r do it will try to dissipate the energy so there is this r this will try to dissipate so initially this will charge then this will try to discharge now to illustrate it better let me give you one more example instead of saying this is an rc let's suppose there is only c now how do i change that if there is only c means there should be r component should be zero so this is the transfer function of an actually a capacitor this is the transfer function of a capacitor whose capacitance is equal to c now if you change this what should happen to this if i apply as in, in input to the capacitor is impulse this will charge instantaneously and you can see the result let me show you the result this should charge instantaneously you can see it charge instantaneously here right it charges to this and we know this is the Trans, this is also the transfer function of an integrator. This is a transfer function of an integrator also. So the this is the input here is an impulse and integration of impulse is step. If you have studied signal system course, this is the, all right. This is from uh, this uh, transfer function point of view. How do you obtain the response, step response and impulse response? Now let me delete it again. And now let's build a different transfer function. And let's, let's build any other transfer function. Let's suppose the transfer function, let me take an example. Which, response, which example will take? Let's suppose this is nine. Let's take any other example. Let's say this is 1.5 and this is nine. I hope this is okay. Now drag it. You'll see that this is the transfer function you have built. And so this represents any system. So this represents a system now. Now, if this is the system, now, how will the uh, step response of that system look like? Now, let me run it. And you can see the step response looks like this. So the step response of this system looks like this. Now, again, there is a problem with this. Why does it look like this? Again, the problem is the number of points that's available. Change the maximum step size here. You will get a smooth curve here. All right, I hope this is clear. So this is how you obtain the step response of a system that is represented by the transfer function transfer function and the transfer function is given as this you can get this impulse response and other responses you can get the ramp response you can get the steady state response steady state response means if the input is sine wave if the input is sine wave you can get the response all right now let me change the transfer function again to show you the trans how to change the transfer function double click on the transfer function block and let's suppose this is zero let's suppose this is zero so this is the transfer function and the transfer function looks like now now this so this is the transfer function now again let's check the step response of this now first let me change the number of points in this step with it let's change it to point zero one to obtain a smooth response. Now let me show you the step response of this system. So this is the step response of this system. This is the step response of the system. Let me show you on this on a single window. So this is the step response of this system. 
you can check the step response. This is the input. And let me show you the legend as well, so that you may be able to see the input and output simultaneously. The blue one is the output and the yellow one is the input. All right. So in short, to build, to write any transfer function in Simulink, just change the coefficients. How do I do that? By double clicking on the transfer function block, disappears, and you will have this as change the coefficients of this numerator and denominator. We'll get the transfer function and to check any response of this uh, system or the transfer function. Apply that input as the that response as the input to the system, and you will get the output. All right. I hope this is clear. So this is how we write the transfer function in MATLAB and where does the transfer function actually come from? So this actually represents the physical system. For example, the example that I gave you is one RC network. Now I want to give you a little assignment and after that we'll uh, stop the session. So let's suppose we have, now let's take an example. This is an assignment for you guys. And you have to do this in Simulink. All right, now the assignment is like this. We have an RLC network. So we have an RLC network. And let's suppose this is series network. Let's suppose the value of R is 100 L is 100. And C is how much? 100 microfarad. So this, these are the values of these parameters rather physical components. Suppose no charge is present or no current is flowing at time t equal to zero. I mean, it's the circuit is initially relaxed or the initial conditions are zero. So when we apply a battery at t equal to zero, means we apply a source of how much volts? Voltage source of 1000 volts to this RLC network. Now what we have to do, we have to use a simulic model to find the current and charge on the pallets of the capacitor as a function of time, it means our goal is to obtain the current and charge. We have to plot it, means plot it using the simulink and plot it, plot the current and charge of this network, your network with these conditions and initially remember the initial network is relaxed it means all the initial conditions are zero and describe how the system behaves as time changes let's describe how the system behaves as the time changes and describe how the system behaves as the time changes and time progresses this is your assignment Take a series RLC network with the with the given values and check the current and charge of the capacitor as time progresses. This is your assignment. All right, let me end it here.